As your eyes adjust to the dim light, you can see soft blue glows here and there all among the trash. All these creatures are so special, and they have so much unrealized potential. Yet look where they wound up. Mason, they don't have that much potential. You get one spell out of them and then they die. Uh -huh. So what do we do now, Elvis? We just eat trash and live as trash? I really hate that my victims all come back from the dead in this city. I know, right, Lowry? Normally it takes at least a week for them to start haunting you. Elvis, how many times have you been haunted by the dead? Uh, it happens all the time. Usually it's whoever annoyed me the most. If I killed them because they deserved it, they always come back. Well, the elevator guy went right back to operating the elevator. You think we're gonna get arrested? Like someone's gonna come down here and arrest us? He's an ageless demigod with a presumed infinite power over the elevator now. He might not even press charges. Well, what do we do now? Not to worry, Paul. I've been stranded someplace stupid in every country I've ever been in. Check it out. Tony, I catch a jewel beetle and then use it to grow a strawberry bush. With a few gestures and magic words, the beetle disintegrates to dust, and a strawberry bush sprouts fully grown from the trash. Okay, what about water? I catch another jewel beetle and grow a barrel cactus. This time, a barrel cactus shoots up next to the strawberry bush. It then falls over into the muck. Well, it looks like your cactus didn't make it. I know how you feel. Oh no, the ground's too soft. Cacti have a shallow root system. So, we're gonna drink cactus water? No, Lowry, you should never drink plain cactus water unless your life depended on it. Cactus water is actually very alkaline, and it tends to be toxic to people. Plus, it could give you diarrhea, which is going to achieve the exact opposite desired effect. Well, what if I want it to kill me? If you want to die, Lowry, we could just kill you. I want to feel alive while I die. Let me feel the pain. No, you weirdo. Tony, I cut open the cactus and try to keep as much jelly water as I can. Then I catch another beetle and purify the water. The water lights up and turns from mostly jelly into pure water. And there we go. Okay, what about proteins? Maybe we could catch some rats? I grow a peanut bush. Magic and who? Peanut bush. Okay, truth be told, strawberries, cactus, water purification, and peanuts are all I can do. So, we're still gonna die in the long run. But this is a whole lot better than nothing, and the clean water is winning a huge part of the survival battle. So you learned all this casually? I starve in the woods all the time. You guys ought to learn it too. All my friends starve in the woods. Why? Well, it's hard for the authorities to chase you deep in the woods. A big part of me thought that the worst of my thieving and running would end with the family swords. My dad was right about everything. He said this is where I'd end up. Homeless and living in the trash. And I'm a little frustrated he was right. Aw. Your dad must have just been talking from experience. I don't know if I should be offended by that. On the bright side, if we need a little food variety, at least we have pancakes. I hate you, Lowry. Actually, we probably ought to eat them now. Before they go bad. What we probably ought to do is get together some stuff and cobble together a temporary settlement so that we have a place to meet and go back to. Do any of you guys know how to navigate? I thought we'd been over this. Nobody knows how to navigate. Hell, shoot. I don't know how to navigate either. Okay, I guess we'll build some shelter, light a fire, and then explore out only so far that we don't lose sight of the fire. That'll be good enough for now. I know how to navigate. How do you guys not know how to navigate? He means, like, navigating by the stars? Or with a compass. There are no stars. And none of us has a compass. Yeah, it makes navigation really hard. And I already don't know how to do it. Just identify a landmark and then travel with reference to sure. it. Sure, yeah, gee, which one? That giant mound of amorphous garbage over there? Or that one over there? That is why we're building a fire. Tony, I start gathering up stuff that I can stack to make a few decent lean-tos. Look for something flammable that I can turn into tinder. Just rummaging around, you find some decent beds, bed sheets, some furniture, and a large tent about the size of a living room. You find a bottle of turpentine to get a fire started. From your perspective, there's nothing wrong with any of this stuff, except how dirty it is. Well, this has been the easiest time I've ever had with setting up a camp. Normally, I gotta dig a poop hole, but somebody threw away a perfectly good toilet. But there's no running water. Well, we don't intend to be here forever. All right, Tony, I start a fire. And it's pretty easy when flammable chemicals are involved. All right, now Mason, you said you know how to navigate. Yes, Elvis, I know how to not get lost like an idiot. Don't say that, because you're going to get lost like an idiot. I'm not going to get lost like an idiot. Tony, I march off into the dump without even looking where I'm going. Does anyone follow him? I want to stay by the fire. I can see where I'm going here. I'm not going anywhere. If you get lost, you have to stay put. Mason's the one who's going to get lost. Do you know where we are? I don't. I'm lost. I'm staying put. Stupid guys. Stupid thinking I'm gonna get lost. You just stay in your fancy tent with your evil pancakes made out of human. Give me a navigation roll to not get lost. I get lost. So you do. 
You wander away from the fire into the dark, get disoriented, and have no idea where you are. Damn it! If my brothers could see me now, they'd make so much fun of me. Fall down on my knees. God! How was I supposed to accept that I was destined for mediocrity? I wanted more! Was it hubris? Was wanting more? More than I deserved? I couldn't have known without trying! You spot movement somewhere on top of a hill. It looks like an enormous animal. I get out my three swords. I am still Mason Two Swords, gosh dang it. And as it turns out, if I die, I'll just come back haunting the swords. You can break my spirit, world. You can break my swords, but you can't kill my spirit, I think. The shadowy figure speaks. He says, Oh, hey man, I'm not here to kill anyone. Throw my swords on the ground. Well, why not? Because I don't even know you. Look, you seem to be going through some hard stuff. I don't mean to be rude, but uh, you didn't start a fire, did you? No. My friend made the fire. They're watching it. I can't even see you. Who's there? Oh, sorry. I have really good dark vision, and I forget other people don't. The figure steps closer to you, and you make out a massive man-like figure with the head of a bull. It appears you're now face to bovine face with a minotaur. Oh. Hello. My name's Matt. Are you, like... The guardian of the trash, or something? Oh, no, no, no. I'm in charge of sorting and incinerating the trash. Of course, I'm the only one doing it, so, uh, tends to pile up on me. He sort of motions around at all the garbage. I'm supposed to incinerate it, but it's not supposed to burn on its own. Yeah, well, it's a controlled fire, Matt. My friends lit it so that I could find my way back to them if I got lost, but now I can't see the fire, so I, I am lost. Oh, then you're in luck. I can see the smoke from right here. I guess I can lead you back. Sure. Uh, but when you do, could you tell them that I found you, not the other way around? It'd be hard not to find you with how you were shouting, but, uh, sure, I'll keep the secret. Matt leads you back to your grounds campsite. The rest of the group, you don't have all too long to react before Mason appears over a hill with a large figure walking casually behind him. Mason! Don't move. There is a giant animal behind you. Yeah, this is Matt. He lives here in the dump. Hello, everybody. Say, is this where you live? <laughs> I guess that makes us neighbors. Sorry I didn't bring any housewarming gifts. Uh, I didn't realize someone was living here. Matt's harmless. He just wants to make sure we're not setting any dangerous fires. Not currently. What is a minotaur doing in the dump? Where else would you keep a minotaur? Excuse me, that's a little insensitive. I'm just saying, not everyone has labyrinth money. And, and compared to, like, a junkyard dog, I mean... One's more intelligent than the other. Actually, I'm pretty sure Pinball City does have labyrinth money. Look, I, I think we're off on the wrong foot. My name's Matt. I am a minotaur, but uh, I'm actually employed here, not imprisoned. Well, that's fine. We're looking for a way out of here. Ooh, are you lost? No! Mason is not lost. None of us are lost. We know exactly where we are. Everything is fine. Yes! None of us are lost. Everything is fine. When we say that we're lost... We just mean lost, like, existentially! We, we want to shake up from being so completely in control and exactly where we want to be, right, guys? Okay, cool. I guess I can feel that. It's nice to get a change now and then. I guess, uh, we're neighbors, so how would you guys like to come to my house for dinner? I didn't bring a casserole with me, but uh, I can still invite you to one. Yes, absolutely. We would love a casserole. It has been too long since we've had a nice casserole. Thank you, Matt. Okay, great. Say, I tell you what, I know the lay of the land so well, uh, let me loan you this. You can give it back to me when you get to my house. Matt hands you a compass. That there compass points to the magical center of the city, which is the pinball the city is balanced on. My house is built right on top of it, so uh, just walk in the direction the compass is pointing, and you'll have no problem getting to my house. Okay, thanks. I always knew where the magical center of the city was anyway, because actually I'm magical, you know. I have magic powers. Oh, that's real cool. Okay, well, uh, I gotta inform the wife to expect visitors, so I'll see you guys in a few hours. Okay, thanks. The Minotaur trudges over the hill, and he's gone. Guys, what the heck? I thought we were trying to get out of here. I don't want the only guy who lives in the dump with us to think that we don't know our way around. Yeah, I'm with Paul. I don't want to look stupid. Well, we're all gonna look stupid. Does anyone know what time it is now? Or what time dinner is supposed to be? Yeah. It's when we get hungry. We haven't stopped to really eat anything since we got to Pinball City. I'm hungry right now. Uh, dang. I guess my internal clock is a little messed up. Do you think we have time to sleep? I don't care what you guys do. I'm going to fill up on peanuts and strawberries and go to bed. Oh my god. Okay, fine. 
I'll set a magical alarm clock for like four hours. Really? You have a magical alarm clock? All your magic has been pretty cool so far, but that sucks. Yeah, well, when your survival depends on getting up at the right time of day after walking for 12 hours, you wouldn't think so. You guys get a quick four-hour rest before Elvis' alarm clock goes off. Uh, man, do we have to go see the Minotaur? I am still tired. Yeah, I bet he cooks a crappy casserole, gets all his hair in it. Okay, c- guys, we can't just choose to die down here in the dump to avoid socialization, which, by the way, you set up. Can't we, though? We can flake out on him without looking dumb. It'll just click. No, we, we him. cannot. I, look, get up. Come on, get up. Elvis rouses the party and gets you guys marching. Following the compass, which allegedly points toward the Pinball City Pinball, it turns out you must be pretty close to it because after only 15 minutes of walking, you find a sort of trash valley, at the bottom of which is a two story home with a white picket fence. The backyard is lit with tacky tiki torches, and you can see the Minotaur cooking something on a grill. He also has a golden retriever playing in the yard. Oh my god, he lives in a suburbanite castle. All right, all right, everybody just be cool. Pretend your parents took you to soccer practice and and fill your pockets with any kind of packaged food that you can find. Middle class marks are the easiest. Don't tell me how to do my business, Elvis. They've got expendable income, but they're afraid of the future. If you can't work with that, you can't work with anything. Listen, the only mark that we need is on a map that shows us how to get out of here, okay? Don't screw that up and get us killed. Fine. Have fun being poor. Matt the Minotaur sees you and waves you guys down. Hey, guys. You were a little early. Man, we could have slept in. Well, Matt, we were just so excited to meet a new neighbor. Well, come on down. You want a sausage and a bun? Yes. All right, help yourself. Yes. The Minotaur's dog jumps on you when you open the fence. He tries to lick your face. Matt grabs it and pulls him off of you. Oh, sorry about that. Down, boy. He gets excited with strangers. We don't see many new faces. Yes, move. Thanks. I take two sausages in either hand. They're still hot and burned your hands. You, uh, you want a plate for those? No. I shove them both in my mouth and pick up two more. I'll grab a plate and then load up on, like, five sausages all at once. Start shoveling bottles of ketchup and stuff into my jacket. If I find a jar of pickles, just take the entire thing. Hey, give me a pickle. No, get your own. I found these. Whoa, I, I should have cooked more food. The back door slides open and a female minotaur steps out, carrying a plate full of chips. She looks very pretty, except for her horrible cow head. Oh, guys, I'd like you to meet my wife, Mina. A pleasure to meet you. She does home real estate normally. You know, you wouldn't believe the commissions you get on Pinball City properties. It feels like there's an opportunity around every corner in this city. Start grabbing chips off the plate and start shoveling them into my pockets. Try and push Lowry aside. Hey, you're not even eating them. Let me have a couple. Get off their free chips. I'll still have them when we get home. I'll I'll just set these down. So, what brings you guys to the, uh, the dump? Opportunities? Where'd you get the sausages? Oh my god. We go shopping topside on the weekends. Those are some of Pinball City's finest. Ah, uh, I regret burning off my taste buds now. Lowry, move! You move. Yeah, we're kind of new to Pinball City, so we're not used to the amazing flavors of all the food yet. Oh, well that makes sense. Oh, you poor things. I completely misjudged you. Hey, have you guys ever considered investing? Shut up, Lowry! Well, I do have a Roth IRA, so... Uh, hey, would you guys like to see the inside of the house? Yes. Oh, gee, I I don't know, dear. I I haven't really cleaned the place yet. It's fine. The house looks great. Let me in your house. I haven't vacuumed all week. It might be really bad if they have allergies. Real quick, I I just want to show them the trophies. Oh, of course you have trophies. He brings you into his living room, and his daughter has the trophies. She's got them for virtually everything, and he's got pictures of her all over the wall. This is my daughter, Mandy. She couldn't be here. She's in college right now, dual majoring in law and arcane engineering with a minor in navigation. She's on her college clipper racing team, so she pretty much knows her way up and down an airship. Uh, And she's strong as an ox. (laughs) Fascinating. You must be so proud. Oh, I really am. I am. And guess what? She's actually looking to join an adventuring group. She's going to graduate next week and is eager to see the world. Of course, we worry, but uh, she got herself a loan for a small airship and has high hopes. Of course, we don't know anyone to travel with her. Yeah, adventuring sucks. You can't hardly afford anything and your employer can drop you on a dime. Just to save dimes. You know what her dream really is? Her school taught her recently about how Magic Tony came to build Pinball City. And she'd really like to travel with the expedition team that went to the North Pole with him. Oh, we know one of those guys. Really? Who? Captain Peaches. 
He stole the airship after they got there. That's not how my daughter tells it to me. She explained that Tony found the city's pinball there, and the pinball city came right afterward. That the ship's captain doesn't even come up. Huh. After he the what? what he found the what? Yeah, after he found the magic pinball at the North Pole. Tony willed Pinball City into existence. Have you not heard the history of the pinball? So the, he's that what he found at the North Pole? That's what my daughter says. The whole city's floating on top of the thing and named after it. It's not just decorative, you know. Well, Tony! <laughs> oh, 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 I bet! Oh, oh! Can you, can you excuse me for a minute? I go and I gather up the guys. What's up? Okay. I just learned that Tony wandered off at the North Pole not to go die in the cold like he rightfully should have because that's what, that's what we were doing, but to find the magic artifact that powers this entire city. Powers it how? I assume with magic, Paul. You're the one with all the magic theory books you tell me. The point is, the point is, it rightfully belongs to me. And by extension, all of us. What does it do? Grant's wishes? Hang on. Hey, Matt, what'd you say the pinball does? The legend says it manifests your desires and makes them real. Okay, thanks. It kills Pinball City and everyone in it, and possibly the whole world. Ah, uh, sweet. The whole world? Trust me, you're gonna want to get rid of all of it. I'm not really seeing a profit motive. Lowry, imagine being the guy who destroyed the whole world. Everyone talks about being the person who sells you a bridge, but if you blow up the world, whatever higher power there is is gonna notice. You're gonna be talked about by things outside your mortal conception as the reason the last world went kablooey. And when they build a new world, they're gonna put in rules and name them after you. All right, you got me sold. I'm all about that legacy. Where do I sign? Here's my plan. All right, Paul, I need you and Mason to come with me to Matt's basement. That's as close as we can get to this pinball before the operation starts. Lowry... You just keep the Minotaurs distracted. Get them talking. It doesn't matter what. Can do. Hey, Matt, can I ask you some questions about your lawn? Oh, sure thing. What do you want to know? Actually, it's about your grass. Can you come outside with me for a second? Me and the guys were thinking about investing in our own property value. Hey, Matt, before you go, do you mind if we grab a drink from your fridge? Uh, yeah, sure. There's a few choices in there. Okay, thanks. We'll see you out here in a sec. Come on, friend. Let's talk topiaries. I lead Matt out. He follows you. Well, see, one of the most important things is to get a good breed of magic grass and then plant it in the autumn. See, because it thinks it's outside, it'll still die in the summer heat even if the sun can't reach it. Wow, amazing. All right, guys, let's get to the basement. Tony, we head down. You get to the basement and see it's finished. He's got a pool table and some weight equipment along with a bathroom. Follow the compass until we're right over the pinball. Mason, pry up the floor. Paul, take your hammer and get cracking. Sweet oblivion, here I come. You pry up the carpet, revealing concrete underneath. Mason, watch the door. If anyone comes down here and they aren't Lowry, hold them as long as you can. Kill them, preferably. Yup, wash the sins away. I am mediocrity incarnate. But in death, all become equal. Glad to see you're finding your spot, bud. I swing the hammer down. You swing the hammer into the concrete with a loud crack. Matt looks up from the conversation with Lowry. Did you hear that? It was probably just someone dumping off a new load of garbage. Now, do you have to water this stuff, or no? Give me a conversation roll. No contest. Well, you keep him and his wife talking. At least for a while. Crack, crack, crack! Paul, your brute force plan is working. At least until you hit solid steel. You aren't sure a hammer alone is going to get through it. No, you're forgetting. My hammer is magically enchanted to make armor soft. I'll use the pick end of the hammer to punch holes and then pry up the loose pieces. Oh, I did forget about that. Well, in that case, sparks fly as you mutilate the steel, prying up sections and pieces at a time and hammering them aside. You bash through the top plating and make a small hole leading into the substructure. Can't be much further now. I help in. Keep us guarded, Mason. I go after Paul. The universe stole my birthright. Now I steal the universe's right to live. Very poetic. Aren't you just a little nervous about this, Elvis? No way. I've wanted to destroy the world for a long time. Man, I, I've met a few people I like, but they always die. I never liked anyone who ever benefited from anything I've ever done. And I've always wished that I could do this. I mean, do you even really know what the pinball's gonna do? If all it does is kills us, it's not like we've got anything else to lose, right? I feel like we can always sink further. No, that's quitter talk. <laughs> I mean, you're right, but let's not quit. Lowry, back with Matt. He looks back towards his house. Hey, your friends have been gone an awfully long time, haven't they? Yeah... Mason probably had to go to the restroom. 
and he's really skittish about going in a stranger's house, so Elvis and Paul are probably stuck on cheerleader duty. Maybe I should make sure they're okay. He starts heading for the house. Oh, that, that's going to embarrass them even worse. You really shouldn't. Matt goes inside and starts looking around for everyone. He checks the living room bathroom. Honey, will you go check upstairs? His wife goes up. Oh, come on. You've never heard Mason fart, but it's like a schoolgirl giggling. He hates it. It's not the impression he wants to leave on you. Yeah, still, it's my house. I, I just want to make sure he's okay. He opens the basement door and starts walking down. Extendo, kick him down the stairs. Well, he's not expecting that. Your extendo boot sends him flying down the stairs, landing directly in front of Mason. This is my full potential! Stab all three swords down into him. That's still a lot of damage, even with only half the swords. Matt grabs at the swords and tries to pull them out. <laughs> oh, oh boy. <sighs> Shh. It's okay. You're with my dreams now. Are you feeling okay, Mason? Yeah. Just finally seeing my fate out there in front of me. My husband! Mina runs off. That's right, you better run, lady. Mason's gone crazy. She runs, straight into the mantle place where she pulls down a huge battle axe. Ah, oh, shoot. I run down the stairs. Go, 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 Mason. She has a battle axe. But Elvis said to stay here. We'll have an easier time four on one. Go, I run for the hole. I guess I follow Lowry. Elvis and Paul, you guys have finished shimmying down the support girders, down to the point of the inverted pyramid. The pinball should be just below you. Above, you hear two clanks as Mason and Lowry drop onto the top girders. What are you guys doing? We're at the cusp of apotheosis. Or antithesis. I don't know. The lady has an axe. The lady jumps down between Lowry and Mason. Elvis, what do you do? I grab a beetle and I hit her with a blinding flash. Sagwa Sanfa! Okay. Beams of colored light extend from your fingertips, hitting her eyes as she covers her face in pain. Oh, God! Ah! Don't you Cretans have better manners than to flash a lady? She grits her teeth and starts frothing at the mouth. <laughs> Mason, your turn. Stab her! You plunge the swords into her thigh, but she barely seems to notice. She only swats blindly at you, swinging the axe at all angles. Lowry, your turn. Extendo kick her off the girders. She's blind and doesn't have much defense. She goes flying down the girders, hitting several on the way down, grunting angrily each time. She lands and immediately starts trying to get up. Paul, your turn. Prepare a block maneuver with my shield. Are you sure? Uh, okay. Uh, she gets to her feet and kneels down. It looks like she's going to charge at you, and the shield probably isn't going to hold. Bring it, lady! Toro! Your daughter's chosen career is a joke! Adventurers amount to nothing! Okay. She lunges at you and not even bothering to try to miss the shield. Good. I don't get out of her way. Your funeral. She makes a direct hit, dealing 24 body just for starters. That's enough to kill a grizzly. How much does your shield handle before it breaks? None of it. If she walks right into it, it bounces it all back. Plus, she doesn't move me at all, which means you can double that damage thanks to the collision. Oh, right. Your shield is magic. Yep. Don't hit Mama's baby. Anything the shield intercepts goes right back where it came from. In that case, she pretty much breaks her neck and spine and crumples in a heap in front of you. She hits herself so hard that you can actually feel heat from the crash, as some of the energy has to go somewhere. A shockwave of compressed air washes over you and Elvis. Wow. Good job, Paul. Honestly, if the universe has got to end, you are a pretty cool guy to end it. Well, here's hoping. This is the big moment. I bash the pyramid open. You tear open the bottom of the pyramid. You can see the open air and the ocean far below. The pinball is hovering below, just within reach. There's a magic force field on its sides, preventing anyone from reaching it from the outside, but nothing above it. All right, everybody, gather around. I say we do this together. Everybody get on your stomachs, get situated. We'll all grab the pinball at once. And then the universe ends? Well, I don't exactly know what it'll do, but the Minotaur said that Tony used it to will Pinball City into being. And at the very least, that must mean that we can will it out of existence. I mean, even if it was a multi-step process making Pinball City, I, I bet blowing it all up will be easy. So we all just reach in and wish that Pinball City were gone? Remember, it's like I taught Mason. Find that bit inside you that wants to be rid of Pinball City and the whole world, and then pull it out of yourself through the pinball. Every fantasy that you've ever had about getting back at the world, just pull it on through. The last time I did that, it caused an explosion. That's the idea, you idiot. Oh, right. You guys reach down, and all together, you clasp hold of the pinball. You will with all your might for Pinball City to be no more. The city begins to shake. 
You feel it starting to fall. The pinball glows white hot in your hands. Don't let go! We've almost got it! This is my true destiny! My parents were never getting back together anyway! Are you there, God? It's me, Lowry. This is for all my friends, Universe! For Tychus and Andre! For Mindy and Pop-Tart and Jessica! For Iggy! Mad, mad Iggy! For Grover Cleveland and Elmo Cleveland and Gonzo Cleveland! The whole Cleveland family! I'll see you guys on the other side! Pinball City enters total freefall, and the world blooms into a white light. I'm not sure what should happen next, but it's getting late, and I suppose here's a good place to end it. Ah, man. Well, thanks for the game, Tony. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, it was nice meeting everybody. I'll try to think of something. Usually we do these once a week, but Elvis asked me to move the day this time for everybody. Yeah, that's my fault. My schedule's usually pretty tight. Okay, well, I guess, let me know. You guys have a good night. Thanks. Yeah, you too. See you around, Tony. Yeah, see you later. Bye. Bye. Goodbye.